Hey everybody, it's me, Costa B, and welcome to a standalone video. This is away from my parks that I'm building, the Disneyland and the Secret Fairs Adventure. I just wanted to play around in the new um, Beta 1 and just use some of the new little things. Um, so basically, I got inspired by the new Gerslauer Infinity Coaster that will be built at Knott's Berry Farm, Hang Time. And I wanted to do something similar, so I've used the the Eurofighter style roller coaster in the game here. I'm just going to build a layout and then I'm basically going to do some theming and use some of the cool bits in the game, check out the new foliage and that kind of thing. And I'm going to talk about how I do some of the things and show you more in a real time. So um, I'm also going to show you things sped up, the boring bits like doing the layout of the coaster. I didn't want to, it took me a really long time, so I don't want to show too much time of me just doing that, otherwise, this video would have been nearly three hours long. So I've really tried to cut it down and make it like a good 30 minutes for you guys to watch with some cool chilled music. And uh, yeah, basically I'm gonna try and build this complete ride, build a queue line and just complete the whole thing with a small kind of rough theme. So I am gonna use a very similar theme to Hang Time and this is called Hang 10. It is gonna be a surf kind of beach inspired ride. It's gonna have sand terrain and palm trees and that kind of thing. So first of all, I'm just going to talk about these Gerslauer roller coasters. Gerslauer is a German roller coaster manufacturer and they make kind of very compact roller coasters. Um, they make larger ones as well, but I imagine, well, I see Gerslauer coasters as having these very kind of sharp inversions and tight turns. And um, some examples for you are Takabisha from uh, Fuji Q in Japan, you have Saw from Thorpe Park, Smiler at Alton Towers. There's a few infinity coasters. You've got the launch one in um, Schlaghagen, which is called Gold Rush, and you have uh, the Schwerdes Kernen in, in Hansa Park. Those are really great rides. So they build a lot of good coasters, and um, I watched a recent video from the IAPA conference kind of for the amusement park world, and uh, I watched a video where they were talking to Gerslauer and talking about the difference between Eurofighters and infinity coasters. Now, the Eurofighter is just a, a certain type of roller coaster that the manufacturer build and infinity coasters are also another type that they build and the difference between them normally is the train so the infinity coasters normally have uh, four rows of seats whereas the Gus Flowers have small cars of two rows and apparently the um, radius of the curves on a Eurofighter is tighter than an infinity coaster so that's what apparently makes it different. So that's a little bit about Gerslau, I don't really know too much about them, but the coasters I've ridden from them I've enjoyed, so I haven't really got anything bad to say. One I've just really uh, quickly thought of is actually um, Typhoon at Bobby Ann Land. Um, that one was a, a little bit rough, but not too bad, and I actually really enjoyed it. Um, but yeah, anyway, so that's some random facts. So here I'm kind of just building some custom supports and playing around with the shape pieces in the game to make some footers. And um, this is something I go throughout the whole ride and do using these um, round shapes. I just made them really small and then I've used this very thin pillar from the pillars and uh, basically just going to plant those into the footer to make it look like bolts on the nine or eight square grid. Um, what I did forget to mention at the very beginning of this video is that this is a no mods build. I am just using everything that comes with the game, everything that you would expect to find if you were going to purchase um, Parkitect. Um, and as I said, it's in the beta 1 uh, version at the moment. So it's a very finalized kind of well thought out game at the moment. I'm really enjoying it. And there's going to be an easier way for you soon to incorporate mods from the Steam Workshop, which is really cool. But anyway, as I said, I'm just going to be building this roller coaster using just only the in-game pieces and just kind of seeing what I can do. So here I'm using a bush as a support killer. Um, there is a mod that you, there is a support killer in, but a, a bush is a good alternative. And uh, I'm basically going to save these footers as blueprints so I can just dot them around the coaster to make the the process a bit faster because it does take quite a long time to plant each one and then sink every little bolt into each one so i'm gonna just kind of speed up that by using these blueprints i've made so later on in this build i will actually do some time lapse kind of quick 
whiz throughs of sections like you did at the beginning with the layout. I think it's very boring for you to watch me build every single support and every single footer. So you've seen me do a few there and you get the idea of how I do it. So I'm just gonna whiz through that later on so that I can uh, get to other parts of the video. So I'm just popping in a fence just to kind of block off where the guests would be from getting into the kind of track area. Now I'm going to try and build some custom catwalks. You may have seen my videos before, you know I like to use the catwalks mod to build catwalks at the side of my rides on the brake runs and the mid cross brake runs etc. So I'm going to try and find a way now to do one without using mods and I found using this half tile roof piece is quite handy for the catwalk there on the side. And then I'm just going to use some pieces from the hanger set just to kind of attach those catwalks onto the track. I do say that these um, catwalks do look kind of chunky, but to be honest, with the style of the game and the art style, it's not really um, a thing that I don't really like. It, they look fine. So I'm going to go ahead and kind of use what I've done here. So one thing I did discover, I, I found what, something I didn't like was that you can't place a fence on in between a tile you can only put them on the tile edges so if I wanted to put a fence along the side of these catwalks I actually can't do it because these catwalks are in the middle of a tile so I have to try and get around that by building my own fence so I'm just going to use the half size um, pillar here from the pillar, the pillar section and to be honest I think they're slightly too large I didn't want the fences on the side to be as high as they are, but I'm just gonna have to go with it for now. And then on top for the rail, I'm just gonna use these cables that are also found in the detail section. And that's just gonna be the handrail for the long side of each catwalk. So normally I like to put a staircase that goes up to the high catwalks on like the, the mid-course brake runs, like a safety staircase, but there isn't really anything I can use. Now I'm saying that I'm thinking maybe there is a piece from the hanger set or something that I could possibly use, or the or a roof, a roof piece maybe I could build like a, a staircase with, but the time's passed now and I've missed it, but maybe I could add that in if I went back to it. But for now I've just left it kind of plain up the top there. So I'm going to tear a paint under the coaster. Uh, I like to um, always put that dark brown around areas and also because this is a beach kind of surf style coaster I am going to put lots of sand in. I do come back to that later on in the video that was just kind of a rough kind of I want sometimes I like to put things down just so I remember to do it and so I put some sand down so I remember later on that I wanted to do that idea. I'll come back to that later. For now I'm just kind of blocking out the station, I've put some of the, also the resizable shapes, I've used the square again and I kind of made it just the right enough height so that it just pops out of the station so you can um, see the grey there as I didn't really like the whole station being orange. So now I'm going to go around the whole ride and get rid of every single support using a bush. So I think I actually whizzed through this with a time lapse really quickly. maybe I don't. It didn't take me that long anyway. So I, I've used a few pieces to try and get rid of the supports and I have found that this bush is the best because the bush doesn't look odd on the floor, it does look like it's something that would be on the floor. So as well as plopping some down, um, I've kind of, I like to uh, put some random as well, not just the ones that get rid of the supports. I like to just, as I said, put some random ones down just to make it look like they have been placed there on purpose and not just as a support killer. So now I'm going to go around the whole ride and do these supports. This is in time lapse, obviously. I always find doing the supports, um, I always enjoy doing them, but I do find them quite tedious. And uh, with this uh, being a no mod uh, ride, I couldn't use any of the pieces I used to make kind of the slant looking supports. So, and sometimes I like to connect some supports together to give it a bit more of like a structure style. 
and that wasn't really possible because the only pieces I could really use for that are the border pieces and they can only be placed on the edge of a tile and I'd need them to be in the centre of a tile. But yeah, I always feel like doing your own supports always look good at the end. So I'm always glad I do it, but doing it is also quite a lot of time and can be a little bit boring sometimes. So as you can see here, I'm just building a queue line. I really like my queue lines on my rides to really interact throughout the whole attraction. So I've really taken it down right up to the Cobra Roll element that I've got there at the end and I've taken it under the track and then the entrance for the ride is actually going to be under the first drop. I think that's a really cool place to have the, the entrance to the queue because as you're coming in and you look up you've got this big towering drop above you. I think it's like a really cool um, place to put your entrance and I did actually steal that from Hang Time from Knott's a Berry Farm because their entrance on the concept art for the ride is actually underneath the drop as well. So I've just popped in there some of the roof tiles. I've used the diagonals just to kind of make that diagonal section look a bit more fluid. I don't like the kind of step look that I did. So I did that quickly there and now I'm just adding this kind of roof section over the top of the entrance. As I always say in my videos, colours are subject to change and that is the case with this yellow. It was just something I thought I was going to use and then actually later on I changed my mind. So I'm going to cover up the drop from the path there so that it's like a safety thing I guess. You wouldn't want the track coming straight over the top of the people. Um, so I've kind of made like a little canopy kind of protection thing there as the entrance and also I think it looks cool especially the shape of those roof pieces look kind of wavy like waves I guess so that's cool so I like to have like a little indoor section of the queue line so if you're a bit hot in the queue you get that moment when you're in this part of the of the kind of cattle pen where there's an air con or there's fans so that's kind of the idea for this little indoor section and it just kind of makes it a bit interesting to have it all building there I'm just kind of trying to make it real simple, kind of Miami looking, you know, with the white and the glass. I chuck a bit of orange in there as well, just to give it a bit of colour. If I was using mods, I would actually um, use some fence pieces from a Shy Guy set and actually make like a cattle pen style fence inside that building. But as I'm not using mods, I can't do that. So I'm just going to leave it blank for now. So let me know in the comments below if you want to see more of me do these kind of standalone episodes where I build an, a, just one attraction instead of doing like a series of a park. I do quite enjoy doing these. It puts less pressure on me to try and finish a park as sometimes I do quite struggle and they take me a long time to complete. If I do a standalone attraction, sometimes I have a bit of inspiration and I can really just kind of make a ride in maybe two days. This one took me about two days to build and I think I maybe recorded, as I said, about three hours of footage. So not too bad really. But yeah, let me know down below if you want to see more of this kind of thing. I'm more than happy to do some kind of these longer videos where I talk about how I do things and what I do and how I create some of the stuff I do. Whether that's using no mods or mods, I'm happy to do both, I guess. I do actually quite like um, experimenting with in-game pieces to see what I can do instead of using a mod. Uh, it makes the process a bit more... Um, I have to use my brain a bit more and think maybe, oh, what can I use to do this and what can I use to do that? And I find these little cool tips and tricks along the way of things that I could use. So in this, uh, between these paths here, these two queue lines either side, in the centre I wanted to do like a kind of sand beachy area and I thought it'd be cool to have some big poles in there with flags on and I'm going to use the new... Um, bushes that they have in the game which I was actually really excited about. One of the things I didn't like about the game as I've been playing it is the lack of foliage and I think a foliage can really make a park when you've got different bushes and flowers and that kind of thing and the bushes and everything that came in the game were very kind of blocky and just these round spheres and very solid shapes 
and I really wanted like a more flow to it and they've put in these really great pieces as you've seen me use the ivy already which goes up the bottom of the lift hill but they've got these planters um, plants in these pots and they've got these really nice bushes and shrubs and I'm really happy with those pieces and they look really great and they've all got like slightly different greens and colors and yeah they're really cool I'm really happy with those probably one of my favorite things about the new update here's me using some now and I'm definitely going to go back into my other parks see the Fairs Adventure and the Disney Park and I'm actually going to add some of this new shrubbery in because I think it really makes a difference to what I've already done but yeah I really love these and you can recolor the flowers and stuff but I actually quite liked the chosen yellow that it gives you and I actually thought the yellow fitted to the attraction quite well so I've just gone with that there and of course this ride um, wouldn't really be complete without palm trees seeing as it is a surfy beach theme so I am gonna put in some palm trees around this area in the middle here to give it some sort of character and there will be more palm trees around the outside as well and I'm just gonna put in some rocks here in the center I think rocks are a really cool thing to break up um, the foliage from the from the ground and to make it look a bit more dynamic so I just like to kind of stack a few little random pieces in here just to make it look a bit more you know like it was been designed by a gardener or something and then add a bit more of this green kind of terra painting in there just to give that sandy area a bit more texture I think maybe there'd be a bit more darker sand or a greeny bit around maybe where the rocks are that's why I've done that there and I love these new little banners they have here in the fence section um, so I thought they looked really cute so I'm just gonna kind of pop those along there just to give it a bit even more some more character so now I'm just gonna do some terra painting super quick I told you already how I kind of do it. I like to have the sand and then break it up with some of the green to give it a bit more realistic kind of shadowy look. Um, I'm gonna go back in again later and neaten that up a little bit more. I'm just adding a path here from the exit queue, uh, exit, sorry, from the ride to the front of the queue. I wanted to build a, like a large kind of stylized fence along the front of the ride. So I'm gonna do that by using this brick wall and I'm gonna recolor it later on. I kind of wanted this ready brick in the beginning and then I realized later on that actually I don't like it and it didn't really match very well. So I will change that later. I'm gonna use this curved piece here in white to put along the top to give it some sort of style. So I'm gonna do that all the way along. And I'm just gonna do this side to match the other side. Now I'm going to use the cube, I'm going to make it white and as small as I can and I'm actually going to put it up the centre of each spiky bit. So if there was like a lantern light I would love to stick one on top of each of these pillars. That would really be the kind of thing I would do if I had the mod for that. But I can make do without for this. I'm going to pop some more palm trees on the front of the ride here. I'm using like a variation of straight ones and curved ones to make it look a bit more kind of real so they're not all just straight. And then back to the shapes again, I'm going to use the cylinder, make it like a terracotta colour and kind of use this as a plant pot. So I'm going to put that on every palm tree at the bottom. And then I'm going to make it slightly bigger, and make it brown and do like a base for each one. I think the shapes were one of the best thing they added in the game because you can make nearly anything with those shapes. You could color them whatever you want. For instance, you could put the spheres together and make a snowman. You could make uh, color the green spheres and stack them in a way that look like trees with a brown pillar. I mean, there's so many things you could do. I, can, I mean, I'm trying to think of things now. You could make an R2D2 probably using the, the dome and the cylinder. I mean there's lots of things you could do using those shapes and I think it's so cool that you can resize them which means no matter what you build it's always 
you can make it bigger or smaller and I think it's really awesome. So every queue line needs little canopies along the way. Normally you find these canopies to be on areas where the track crosses so that loose articles don't fly out. So I've kind of gone along that kind of rule, I guess. I mean, it's not exact. I'm just kind of, I like to evenly space them out sometimes so it looks neat. But again, as I say before, those uh, colors on those umbrellas will change probably, probably. For me, that yellowy orange wasn't really popping enough. And as I kind of progress, I end up using this really like rich pinky red color and it goes way better with that turquoise blue. So now I'm building like a little maintenance shed. This one isn't really super, super detailed, just a little, a fun detail. And I'm just adding a, a white roof, some glass there to make it look a bit modern and using the tin kind of walls to look like that kind of warehouse look. And I think these girls flowers don't really need a big warehouse shed because the trains or those rides are very small. So using the white wall there so that the people in the path can have a nice white wall instead of a corrugated iron. And then I just take another piece of coaster, basically build a new one, just add a section in, color that the same as the track and get rid of the station piece. And there you have what looks like basically a transfer track. I put this little frame on the floor so that section of track there could slide back and forward. Obviously in real life, that doesn't actually do that in this game, um, but it's just there for aesthetic. So I'm adding a little maintenance drawer on the back so that the workers that would work in there could get in. And then just terra painting as I always do, just to make the area look a bit more kind of, you know, there'd be gravel there, I guess. I always like to make the shapes a bit odd so that it looks a bit more real and rather than placed. So I'm just gonna go in and add some of these lights. As I said earlier, I, like to put, I would like to put a lantern on top of each of those things, but then I realized that maybe I could actually use these wall lights which actually look really modern and really cool. So I ended up using those for this. Just gonna plop one on each pillar. Okay, so now I'm gonna go in and do the station. So first of all, I'm gonna use probably my favorite fence from the game and it's this really simple one. I think it looks just really neat and clean. It hasn't really got too much of a style to it, so you can kind of use it for most things. It's very generic. I'm going to go around and add a white wall around the station. This station is by no means the best station I've ever built. It's very simple. It's not complex, um, but it just used a nice style, kept it kind of modern and fresh, threw some colors in there. Really simple one, but it doesn't really have to be too complicated with these kind of rides. You find that some of these roller coasters don't really have very complex stations. They're normally just a tin roof with some pillars holding it up. So I'm going to go in now and add some pillars in to support my roof. Um, where I'm currently placing them is not where they will be. I'm just kind of experimenting to see where it looks best. So I end up putting them slightly inside the station and poking through the roof. So I was happy with that. One of the updates as well in the recent update is that you can put the entrance and exit for these wider station coasters and rides on actually the ends of the platform. Normally you could only put them on the side of the platforms, but now you can actually add them on the very end. It's really cool. So as you can see, I've put the exit there on the end just to kind of try out that new little feature, I guess. It's just putting in a smaller pillar here to support this small exit roof. So at the moment it's looking very white and plain, so I'm gonna color it. So I'm gonna do it in random shades of blues and greeny colors to give it that kind of like a, I don't know, just a more something, something nicer to look at than just plain white or gray. So I did want to add some sort of like framework, kind of join everything up, but 
couldn't really find the right piece to do that. As I said, the border pieces only go on the edge of a tile, so that didn't really work out. Just gonna cover the stair areas quickly with a piece there, just to neaten it up. So I'm gonna do the same thing as I did with the big large fence on the front. I'm gonna add the small cube from the shapes just on the corners of each part of the station to give it like a solid base kind of I want the foundation of it to look a bit more solid than it was, basically. And then I'm going to use this pillar, and this is where I kind of find using this kind of pinky red and how it actually matches and ties in really well and makes the green pop and the, the pinky red pops against the greeny turquoise as well. So I'm going to put that around the whole station as like a kind of design looking kind of print element, I guess just gives this a bit of a pattern and it just way it just looks way way better and it's not as boring to look at and then this is something I actually really like so then I as I've said I use this pinky red color and put it throughout the rest of the queue line and use it on the entrance of the ride but I am going to keep some of that yellow that I used in there as well just a little bit though not too much There we are, looking good. Now for the yellow ones, I'm just going to put these in every other slot, I guess. I think this looks like a kind of beach vibe. That's kind of what I was trying to go for without really knowing what I was doing. So here I am now using the same thing and the very uh, front of the ride at the entrance. I'm just going to make the entrance match the station by using those pillars and those colours. And then I think, why can't I just not use these pillars on the chunky pillars here on the fence? I think that'd be another way to tie it all in together. It's always good to have elements of your attraction tie in. I like the station, the queue line, the front of it, maybe some of the fences have a colour theme or a style. And sometimes I don't really know what that style or theme is until I've reached kind of the end and realise, okay, I can use this colour throughout the attraction, which is what happened with this one and this pinky red. And so I'm just going to kind of go with it and try to add it in places where I think it looks good. And I think it suited these kind of fences really well. But this is when I realised that the red brick didn't really go so well against that kind of ready pink pillar. So I try and colour it into a much lighter grey kind of brick colour. And it looks much better. So I'm just going to kind of join that fence up to the station by using some diagonal pieces. So I'm going to add some more palm trees in, in those beachy, sandy areas. I mean, this is basically most of the ride complete. So I'm just gonna talk about the layout a little bit because I didn't really do that. Um, I've kind of tried to stick to a very typical Eurofighter style layout. I wanted to create my own, but they always have that beyond vertical drop. There's normally a loop and they normally have an overbank turn. I didn't really do one of those, but um, I went for a 
and Immelman. And then I went for this kind of pop of airtime into the Cobra Roll. I always like those surprising pops of airtime. They're always really cool on a ride. And then I've taken it up into a mid-course brake run, which you see quite often. And then into like a slower final section with some kind of swooping curves, a kind of an inline twist or a barrel roll into the brake run. So these coasters are generally not too long. Um, they're very kind of small and compact layouts with a lot of twisted inversions. And I wanted to make sure that the pacing of the ride was um, kind of realistic. I didn't want the car to absolutely fly through the whole thing. I did want it to slow down at the end and be a bit more slower in the top of some of the inversions. So that's why I've put some trim brakes in there throughout the layout. And I normally find that the first half of the ride is a lot more thrilling and the second half of the ride is normally a bit more calm and kind of more enjoyable. That's the kind of idea I get from these rides. But anyway, here it is. This is Hang 10. Um, a Gerstlauer Eurofighter coaster that I built using Parkitect uh, Beta 1 and yeah basically I just wanted to show you what I could kind of create without using mods so thanks for watching please comment like and subscribe and let me know if you want me to do more of these kind of videos but I'll see you all next time bye